Good evening, and welcome to The Unexplained. Today we discuss a curious story of a brunch date with an extraterrestrial being. As a child, this one always made me quite hungry. <laughs> this is the testimony of Joe Simonton. April 18th, 1961. It was an ordinary day for 60-year-old plumber Joe Simonton. He was making his lunch on his chicken farm when his life changed forever. A sound like tires on wet pavement screeched above his property. When he looked out the window, he saw a craft descend to the ground. He rushed outside when he saw this. There was a hatchway opening up in the top of it, just like the trunk of your car. And then there, there stood a little man, I say a little man, about five foot tall, holding up a jug or a, a container, and he motioned he wanted to drink. The little man was wearing a two-piece suit and looked, according to Joe, Italian. On a separate occasion, he described them as wearing one-piece tunics with no buttons or zippers, but still insisted they looked Italian. There were two others who also remained inside the ship. Joe, in disbelief, took the jug from the little man and filled it up with water. Still in shock, he took the filled jug back to the spaceship and handed it back to the man. The little man gave him a salute with the back of his hand and Joe saluted back. Then silence. No one said or did anything. But there was another little man to the right side of Joe. He seemed to be cooking on what appeared to be a square flameless stove, but appeared to be very hot with smoke coming from it. Joe described what they were making as pancakes. Unsure of what to do, Joe signaled that he wanted one of the pancakes by symbolizing eating. The man didn't say a word, but grabbed four of them and handed them to Joe. They were incredibly hot and greasy. If that was their food, God help them, because I took a bite of one of them and it tasted like a piece of cardboard. And uh, if that's what they lived on, no wonder they're small. Then, Joe exited the craft and the hatch closed tight and it rose and shot off into the sky. Within two to three seconds, it was gone never to be seen again. Well, there I stood in the driveway with a handful of greasy pancakes and my mouth open, wondering what the heck I saw, what had happened. He kept the story to himself, but eventually felt as if it was important enough to contact authorities. The Air Force's UFO investigation team, Project Blue Book, was on the case and had determined that he was a credible witness, but found no evidence to corroborate his story. The four pancakes ended up in different locations. The first one was taken by Project Blue Book, the second was kept by Joe, and the remaining two were given to various UFO investigation committees. Okay, so this is a weird one. So let's look at the testimonies and evidence from this case. Dr. Hynek from Project Blue Book sat down and discussed this situation with Joe. He believed that his story was sincere and ruled that it would be left unexplained. But there are a few oddities which should be investigated. First off is the pancake. If it was from some extraterrestrial kitchen, then what would it be made of? It was determined either by the Food and Drug Department or a group from Northwestern University, it's not really sure that they were just regular buckwheat flapjacks made of flour, wheat, sugar, and grease. Which I guess other planets could have those ingredients, but what are the chances? There are rumors that the wheat was unidentified. Curious. 
Then of course there are the aliens, appearing to Joe as short Italians, which just adds extra confusion to the whole experience. Who were they? The testimony leads to a few theories. Theory 1. Joe carried out a hoax. He made the pancakes and told a wild story just for the attention. This is a difficult one for me to believe due to Dr. Hynek saying his testimony seemed truthful, but he could have just been a very good liar. Which leads on to theory two. He genuinely believed that it happened. It has been discussed that the Air Force decided to let the matter slide and not reveal publicly due to the possibility of causing him embarrassment, which might prove injurious to his health which has been interpreted as Joe having some form of mental illness, which made him believe in the encounter. But does that explain the pancakes? Did he just bake them and forgot? Or was it theory three, a dastardly prank by a bunch of short Italians, which I find a bit more ridiculous than the alien story. Who knows? Maybe a bunch of kids decided to play a prank on an old man. But how do they pull off the saucer effect? And why this sort of prank when Joe had no interest in UFOs before this encounter? Ultimately, when he was visited in 1970 by UFO enthusiast Lee Alexander, Joe admitted that he had seen aliens since, but due to the way his first report was received, which led to three weeks of not being able to work, he decided not to tell anyone. Did Joe Simonton really have brunch with extraterrestrials? Or is it a much sadder tale of a kind old man struggling with his grip on reality? We may never know the truth, therefore it remains a mystery of the unexplained. Personally, I think there is something so sweet about being given pancakes from a person from another world. A stellar cultural exchange a story of peace and kindness, tucked cosily in between horror stories of cattle mutilation and abduction. I for one hope that this small glimmer of hope did happen, even though my better judgement says otherwise. What do you think? Until next time friends, good night.